Hey guys, Zach from 7th Hour Films back again with Mr. Robot. Last time on Mr. Robot, we had Damon's. Uh, so, Elliot uh, was going through withdrawal, then he got high. Debatably, I guess we don't really know. Could have been, could have not been, honestly. But I think he did get high. Had a bunch of hallucinations, and then uh, was good. And then they went off to Steel Mountain. Meanwhile, Angela got high with Shayla, and then eventually went, after she was high, she went to All Safe to upload the thing, and then that was that. Not a whole lot in that episode, not a, not, not a ton, uh, but that's okay, that is perfectly okay. It was a good in-between episode, uh, we also got a bit of, uh, Darlene and, uh, the other girl, um, so yeah, I finally got Darlene's name, but I'm having trouble with the other girl, so, yeah. Uh, they were working on the uh, Black Market, or not Black Market, the Dark Army uh, contact, and eventually they did. And I guess that was pretty much that. Uh, this is where I say no spoilers in the comments whatsoever, and we might as well head on into this episode of Mr. Robot. Here we go. You let our people out. That's your use to us. We have a solid case. Is that Renee well, we from Arrow? Really have these binders. We were careful. You tweeted about every transaction your business was involved in. That is the opposite of careful. It's no wonder an anonymous tip turned you in. Well, called in the tip. This is what is meant an by anonymous. Yeah, you it dumbass. Is now milk. Uh, does he know? Did he figure out that it's Elliot? We're trying to penetrate a data security facility whose tagline literally is impenetrable. Yeesh. That's tricky. They don't call it Nasing Say. That means penetrable city. Mr. Robot has flaws. He's absolutely insane. We're talking clinical. When they say if your friends jump off a bridge, would you? He would, without hesitation. Just to prove something. So he goes in there, he's liable to blow the whole place up. Just like he wanted to in the first place. Yeah. So you don't want to look over there. I'm Sam Sepio. You should look me up. Okay, a little inelegant, but we can work with it. Nah. Yeah, there's no, there's no suave to this cover. I mean, have you even thought this through? What are you gonna do? Go live with your dad in Jersey? Come on. Yeah, for God's sake, it's Jersey. Ruining your life. Maybe, but I also ruined yours. Tuh. Why do you have my work ID? Oh. She did that through your computer. Did you even think about how this would affect me? I think she did. I did. And she's enjoying it. Bye. Elliot, now's the time we get rid of Bill. You have so much information. Now. Okay, we're gonna need to roll up our sleeves here. You have to I've already got it. Bill in order to get to his supervisor. No. There's one vault you know how it feels when someone makes you small. You understand what happens when someone exposes the thing you fear most about yourself. Answer me! Answer me! Oh shit. Get up. You're worthless. Ah, uh, he's gotta throw that at Bill. Think about it, Bill. Think about what? He's got such crazy eyes. If you died, would anyone care? <laughs> Holy crap. Would they really care? You're nothing to anyone. <laughs> so Everyone. He says Mr. Robot Think is crazy. It, Think about it, Bill. I'll call my supervisor. Oh. Trudy Davis, account supervisor. Is there a problem here? Mr. Sepio, asking for someone more senior than me. Yeah, no, this, um... This woman's a ghost. None of these are her. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. No LinkedIn. The elevator's almost here. <clears throat> yes, that's how they work when you press the button. <laughs> I like she actually heard him. Most people in fiction don't. Specifics help, but specifics don't change the way that everyone is vulnerable. It just changes the way that we access those vulnerabilities. Okay. I have to go. I'm sorry. I need to go to my office. Reception will see you out. Yeet. 
I spoofed the text from her husband. Uh oh. What we always feared. That is vague. Vague enough! Damn, that's some Breaking Bad shit right there. Elliot. Terrell. I thought I saw you. What are you doing here? That's an excellent question. How do you improv that? Join me for lunch? Sh sure. I eat lunch. <laughs> so you are like the rest of us. Dude, I don't know if you're like the rest of us. He has no. a vulnerability. He's an arrogant prick, and he's proud of it. He cares what you think about him, even though he probably hates that he does. Tyrod mm. Bell's greatest asset is his hubris, but it's also his flaw. And that's your exploit. It would be nice. His hubris. Here. Oh. Ah. Oh. That's what he needed. I know you framed Terry Colby. Do you? I, I didn't. Your father worked at Evil Corp before he died. That's a matter of public record. Guy's saying this while he's taking a piss at a urinal. Just wanted to know your weakness. Hmm. Now I do. Revenge. Hmm. I mean, ordinary. that's getting him closer to CTO. Like waiter. But even extraordinary people, and I believe you are, are driven by human banalities. And unfortunately, we're all human. Yeah. Except me, of course. I'm specifically Zognoid. Uh-oh. You broke up with Ollie? I know. Just got off the phone with him. Hmm. Come on. He was sobbing. He wanted me to tell you something like, I'll always love you, please come back. Oh, and uh, he can learn to forgive you. <laughs> Jesus. What did you say? I told him I thought you should have broken up with him a long time ago and hung up on him. No. Nice. Good job. Well, he cheated on me. Oh, there's that. Well, yeah. the cheating part, I'm not surprised. Thanks. I'm not trying to make you feel bad, honey, but come on. The kid's a douchebag. I like this guy. And you'll stay here and commute until you can save for an apartment. I can't make you do any of that. And you didn't. It's what I want. This guy's a good man. I you like hungry? him. Yeah. No, no, sit, 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 sit. Relax. What would you like? You don't need to cook for me, Dad. French toast. <laughs> Coming up. Oh, I like that. He's a good man taking care of his daughter. They were out before you ever got to Steel Mountain. Why? I don't know why. That's all they said to me. Huh. Before they got to Steel set? Mountain. Can you read my secret emails? Mm, no. <laughs> my job is uh. mostly paperwork and bureaucracy. English is they when she tries to act normal. Allows. Four people in the world know about my conversations. Somehow, you're number five. And I'm exactly what you need in a right hand. Ah. If you were me, would you trust you as your right hand? If I were you, I wouldn't have even let me in the house. <laughs> That's a good point. You know, I have a Beautiful vintage over here. I would love to just show you the label. The label? No. All right. She's going to keep him busy, There's I guess. Also, this she just downed that wine. Position, actually, take a look at this. Look at this label. I'm in here. Can I help you? Do they have two toilets next to each other? What's going on here? for a lovely evening. The 
Dark Army is bailing. Why? They don't answer whys, apparently. That's no problem. We'll just call them back. We'll set up another Dude, did you not hear me? They've gone dark. It's not happening. Hmm. I know. I know. I get it. Okay, I fucked up. I don't know if that's your fault. They're being bitches. Everything you guys did today would be for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy? It will have no effect. It'll take down their network for They'll weeks. recover. It would still hurt them. We don't want to hurt them. We want to kill them. Oh, he's so pissed. We do In a month, they're going to be up and running again with even better security. Yeah. We're not going to get another shot at this. The revolution that we've always talked about will be gone. Dead and buried. Yeah. We will have Tell me it's okay to execute. <sighs> you know it's not. You didn't even say anything. We'll, we'll rework it. We'll figure something out. We got this far. We'll find a way, just not tonight. Ah. He said that billions of years ago, the world shifting and oceans moving brought that sand to that spot on the beach, and then I took it away. Every day, he said, we changed the world. Which is a nice thought until I think about how many days and lifetimes I would need to bring a shoe full of sand home until there is no beach. Oh, yeah. Until it made a difference to anyone. Uh oh. Say that. Hey, bro. Ah. Sometimes the universe aligns perfectly. This guy. Here I am, locked away. Um, I have no idea what Angela found. So it, it was a bunch of evil corpse stuff. I'll, I'll try to look at it again, but I don't know. Alrighty, that's episode five. Well, they started. They started to destroy Steel Mountain, but it's not meant to be, at least in this episode. But that is interesting how... Uh, yeah, this is going to take more time, you know. I guess I kind of figured that this would be... <laughs> I, I don't know, like, like the Grinch, like, this is stop number one. Like, this is the first thing that they needed to do uh, for their grand revolution. But I, I guess I didn't even realize, like, no, this, this was kind of just it. Like, you destroy Steel Mountain. They don't, you know, destroy Steel Mountain, destroy the redundant stuff in China, and then that's just kind of that. The problem is now they have so many they're going to have you know multiple locations you know like they said a few episodes ago so this is just going to make things even harder you know <sighs> oh free and dark army blowing it like I don't know I don't really I don't know if I can put that on Darlene. Like, I think I would... I, I don't know. Like, she's definitely putting it on herself. But I don't know if I would put that on her, you know? So, um... So, yeah. Also, it was Vera. Okay. I wrote down Fernando because I couldn't remember what his actual name... Well, the name that, they go, that he goes by. But it is Vera. Okay. Man, and yeah, okay. Let's try to look real quick at what uh angela was looking at hang on i'm really looking past due okay it says has to so it looks like some sort of evil corp bill uh actually i think that just hold on you know okay i'm getting closer hang on there we 
here. Let me do the Picard uh, shirt tuck. Let me look. By the way, that says E Corp. By the way, I just realized I shouldn't yell into the microphone when I'm this close to it. That says E Corp, not Evil Corp. Way to go, prop people. Donald Moss, that's their dad's name. St. George's Hospital, past due. Okay, so it's a hospital bill that's past due. Let's keep looking. It was a little hard because I was also reading the subtitles for Elliot's story. Okay, what's this one? Huh. Card shirt tuck. Let's go. Uh, e Corp. Again, it still says E Corp. What are you doing, prop people? It's supposed to say Evil Corp. What are you doing? Uh, this one says insurance. I don't know why my table is shaking so much. Can I like? Ah. Apparently, I just have a shaky table. Sorry about that. Okay, E Corp insurance. Specifically, E Corp. Okay, I can't really get much else from that. Let me. Okay, it zoomed in. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, it zoomed in. Past due, nearly $26,000 is. So he has a debt to Evil Corp. Okay, and then it cuts back to Elliot and Darlene. Okay, and then she goes. Okay. So. So, her dad, her dad basically just has a large debt. I couldn't, it's, okay, so see, when we originally watched that scene, part of it was uh, because, you know, this is Elliot's monologue. I'm trying to pay attention to what he's saying, and because of that, I, I was also reading the subtitles of, uh, I was reading the subtitles along with him talking, so I couldn't, so I couldn't pay attention really to what Angela was looking at. But okay, so her father has basically twenty six thousand dollars in debt to Evil Corp. Okay, man, holy crap! For last episode being you know the sort of in between episode, this episode had a lot, definitely. Oh my gosh. Man, just a lot happened in this episode. It was really, really great. Um, okay. So, we started off with Vera. Uh, originally, I wrote down Fernando, because I guess that's his real name, but he goes by Vera. So, um, But we started off with Vera in prison. And, and man, I, I don't know. Like, I don't remember... I don't remember, like, his big speech i guess that he had with uh with elliot but yeah it's like this is very it's very interesting just him saying it's like oh it doesn't matter nobody can really pass a sentence on me it's like what the fuck are you talking about man you're insane so i don't know but that was interesting i did like just immediately i caught that his brother is played by uh renee ramirez from arrow which i loved him on arrow he was he was a great character uh so it's just, so yeah just immediately I'm like oh, it's renee yay <laughs> you know which i mean that's the thing you know that's always the fun thing when you recognize actors is like oh that's renee and then i'm just like yeah i just want to call him renee now but that wasn't his name obviously um which i guess it's sort of like um okay i i haven't seen uh rami malik in too many things but the main thing that I have seen him in is Night at the Museum, where he plays King Achman Ra. 
<laughs> and just already after watching five episodes of Mr. Robot, if I, you know, whenever I go back and watch that movie again, it is going to be weird. Just be like, oh, it's Elliot, but, you know, a pharaoh, <laughs> King Achman Ra. So, um, so yeah, like I was, that that's sort of another just interesting, like, I don't know, it's just fun to recognize cast members, basically. Um, so yeah, Vera figured out that it was Elliot who sent in the tip, and I guess he's going to be doing, he's doing something with Shayla. <sighs> he's gonna do something, he's doing something with Shayla. And I guess that's next episode is going to have to be uh, Elliot and Darlene, I guess, saving Shayla. So we'll have to see. Um, I wrote down flaws. Uh, I thought that was interesting. Again, you know, kind of uh, going off of uh, last episode with the Damons. Like, yeah, this, you know, which I guess, isn't this? Yeah, this episode is titled Exploits. Um... Oh, I guess at the beginning of the episode, I didn't say EPS 1.3 underscore Damons dot whatever it was. I think it was MP4, but this one's dot WMV. I completely forgot about that, but yeah. But the theme of this episode was exploits, which I mean is sort of sort of similar to uh, the stuff with the Damons. Um, but I like that, you know, it's like, okay, so his exploit is that he has no self-control when it comes to food. You know, he, he doesn't like that, obviously. And it's like, okay, so we've got their exploits and stuff like that. I love when he says, uh, the flaw with Mr. Robot is that he's completely fucking insane. You know? Like, you know, the old thing of, oh, if your friend jumps off a bridge, do you jump too? He will jump he will jump without hesitation. <laughs> it's like, which that, that is the interesting thing. It's like, yeah, he, um, that, that is his flaw is that he is just insane, you know? Um, cause that's the thing is that we don't know his name, you know, we don't know Mr. Robot's name and none of them, none of the, you know, the crew at F society, they don't call him by his name, you know? It kind of makes you wonder, do they even know his name? So, I don't know. It's it's one of those things where it's like, man, I, I really want to know more about Mr. Robot himself. So, but I imagine maybe we'll get some. I don't, I don't know if we'll get any, like, soon, like next episode. But I imagine we will get more about Mr. Robot. So, I like that. Uh, we had the tour. <laughs> Elliot trying to act natural barely worked barely barely worked like i mean you know he says like oh i was acting too weird and it's like yeah like every you know young tech billionaire and it's true honestly you know it is kind of true and oh poor bill poor bill he was starting to cry too it's like <laughs> oh that's the thing too it's it's one of those things where it's like that honestly was funny just the way you know because he's like oh you know, makes someone feel small, and he remembers, like, his mother, you know, berating him and stuff like that, and he just looks and is like, if you died today, would anyone really care? Would anyone give a shit? It's like, like, maybe it's because of the way he talks, you know? Because of the way he talks and his eyes are always, you know, sort of crazy, <laughs> that it honestly made it funny, and yeah, you know, you feel bad for this guy, Bill, it's like, oh man, this poor man, he's just trying to make an honest living, you know? So, but yeah, like, I thought that was really, really funny. So, uh, then we had Trudy instead of Wendy, uh, which was interesting. It's like, oh, they were going to, you know, they were going to give a thing that's like, oh, well, you know, um, Wendy, to get her out of there, was going, they were going to say, it's like, oh, your wife just, your wife is going into labor or whatever, but... The problem was, she did. Too early and she was already gone. And so they had to improvise with Trudy. Amazing that they were able to improvise at all in this situation, you know? So, that was pretty interesting. And I did... And that was interesting with, like, the husband. That was a gamble, I have to say. That was a gamble when it's like, oh, it's, I'm at the hospital. It's what we always feared. And that, you know, gets her to leave. That is, that is kind of a gamble because it's like, yeah, you know, you had no information. Like, I don't remember if they said, like, oh, because they mentioned, 
They mention her husband's cell phone number, but they don't really mention... I don't think they mentioned anything about, like... Uh, I don't think they mentioned anything about, like the hospital or anything like if he has some sort of condition or something so that was kind of a you know a real gamble on like oh you know it's, it's what we always feared you know like because there is a possibility that she would just be like the hell are you talking about like you, you know because i guess it's that part you know like saying like oh i'm at the hospital or something because you could even just say like i'm at the hospital i was in a wreck i'm pretty bad you know like which is something that they did, this is why I mentioned it, they did that in Breaking Bad once to get uh, Hank Schrader off their tail. Uh, when he was, like, right there, so they used that, like, said, like, oh, his wife has been in an accident, you know? So, which, I, that's not really spoilers if uh, any of you are, if you, if any of you haven't watched Breaking Bad. Um, but yeah, it's, it was kind of the same thing, but... The, the way they phrased it was a little bit too specific that it kind of made it more of a risk, you know? So, uh, but still, it worked out. Um, we got Tyrell and his hubris, his hubris in your arrogance. Uh, but yeah, that was interesting. I like, I like, it's like, oh, you know, um, you know, play to his hubris. You know, he's an arrogant prick, you know, just like do that. And so it's like, Oh, here we are at this nice food court that we have here. And Elliot's just like, you eat here? Really? And that is enough. It's like, yeah, of course Tyrell doesn't eat there because he's friggin' Tyrell Wellick. Of course he doesn't eat there. So they go up to the other place and they talk about the waiter and stuff. So, yeah. Oh, man. But Tyrell, he's such a weird character, you know? Like, and it's interesting because he gets a decent amount of focus, too, you know? Like, I'd say in this episode, he probably got as much, if not more, screen time than Angela, you know? And you would think, like, oh, Angela, she's more of a main character. But it's like, no, Tyrell is, Tyrell is a main character, like, more than I would have suspected, you know? So, I like that. I just, just Anytime he's on scene... It's so tense, but I don't know, like, what I'm expecting, you know? Because everything he does, you know, it's always in this, like, this cold, calculated way, basically. So, I don't I don't know why, like... <laughs> I don't know why I expect him to, like, kill someone or something. It's like, no, that's not... But that's not how he works, you know? Oh, my gosh. I just... I, I don't know. Like, you almost expect him to, like, you know, kill someone, just snap, basically. But it's like, no... He never snaps, and that may be the scarier part, you know? Because it's like, you almost can't read him, you know? So, ugh, he's just, he's so creepy. And this guy, uh, who plays this guy? Who plays it? G give me the cast list. Uh, da -da -da. Martin Wallstrom, with like a little thing over the O, so I'm, there's no way I'll be able to actually pronounce that properly, but, um, but yeah, this guy, I mean, like, this guy is really, really good, he's just so tense, and like, just, ugh, jeez, so, uh, but yeah, and then we had that talk about, like, oh, you know, we're all human, you know, it's like, okay, your flaw is that, which, that's the craziest thing, is too, is that, you know, he's, he starts talking about flaws, like, oh, you know, well, we all have our flaw, Elliot, and yours is revenge, and now I know. You know, it's like... And the thing is, when he says, like, oh, I'm not going to turn you in for framing Terry Colby. Well, yeah, of course you're not, because this is your path to being the CTO of Evil Corp, you know? So, of course he wouldn't turn him in. He's probably, he's probably like, oh, well, that you just, you know, handed me the job, basically. I mean, he's still having to work for it a little bit, but still, it's created that path for him. So... Um, so yeah, but yeah, it was just interesting, it's like, oh, you know, you, now I know your weakness, your flaw, and that's revenge, you know, it makes you human, that's your, you know, basically human quirk, so I just completely bumped the table, sorry, uh, but yeah, that was really, really interesting, I like that, because, yeah, it's like, when he starts talking about stuff like that, you almost think, like, oh my gosh, this guy thinks very similarly to... Elliot, you know, which we've had that a couple times where it's like, you know, um, like in the first episode when we first meet him and it's like, you know, Elliot's thinking, really, uh, you know, 
uh, executive running Linux. And before he even finishes that sentence in his head, he says, I know what you're thinking. An executive running Linux. You know, it's like there's just this strange connection, honestly, between Terrell and Elliot. There it's like, what? This is very, like, strange. Like, it's it, it honestly is, like, two, you know, great minds think alike, honestly. You know? So, I like that. It's very interesting. Um, and we did install the Raspberry Pi into the thermostat, but we can't use it, unfortunately. Because the Dark Army has backed out, like, a bunch of pricks. So, yeah, we don't know why, unfortunately. We don't know why the Dark Army is out, but they are. And so we can't go forward with the destruction of Steel Mountain. So, yeah. Uh, we also had, uh, again, hopping back to Terrell, we had the, the dinner with uh, the guy who's actually up for CTO, which is interesting. Because, um, yeah, it's like, I like, you know, basically, like, two power plays, honestly. Like, you know, he goes in and's like, oh, well, don't you want someone like me as your right hand? And... Uh, He's like, nah, I, I, like, if, like, he tries to one-up and is like, oh, if you were me, would you want, would you consider you to be your right hand? And then Terrell hits back, he's like, if I were you, I wouldn't have let me in, you know? Like, just a, just a good play of, like, I know I am better than you, you know? Like, don't even try this, you know? So, that was, that was really good, and then... That, that had to have just... That was basically just a straight power play. Walks in while this woman is taking a dump on, you know, one of her two toilets. What was that about? I don't know, but she had two toilets next to each other, and she was on one of them taking a shit or whatever. And then he just walks in, stands there for, like, 20 seconds, and is just like, thank you for the lovely evening. And then walks right out. It's like, that is a straight power play like geez louise so yeah uh and then we had the stuff with shayla the stuff with shayla you know hey she had a good first day at work but but seems like she has been kidnapped by vera's men so we're going to have to deal with that somehow um and then the last thing i wrote down was angela and her dad uh which again you know i i did like uh i did really like her dad just immediately like yeah oh well I always knew he was a douchebag and stuff, and I was like, oh, well, I'm going to take care of you. You know, you can commute from here to, you know, work until you find an apartment. I'm going to loan you some money, and even just down to, here, I'll go make you some French toast. You stay here. It's like, that, that's just amazing, you know? Like, I, I really did like that, but he does have his own troubles that because he owes Evil Corp about, tw well, around $26,000, and he's past due. So, who knows, you know, that, it, it might not even start out as that much, but over time, like, the interest may have been going up because he's late on, uh, whatever this payment is, so, yeah. So, yeah, that, that was pretty much it. Great, great episode. A lot of stuff happening, and I really did enjoy it, and I can't wait to get into the next episode. Uh, almost quite literally, uh, but yeah. So, that's pretty much that. Uh, with all that being said, I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. If you want to watch more of my Mr. Robot reactions, you can click on the playlist, you can subscribe if you haven't done that already, and be sure you hit that notification bell. You can support me on Patreon and follow me on social media, links below in the description. See you guys later.